Good morning, St. James, uh, and Happy Easter. You may notice that the backdrop is a little bit different this Sunday. Uh, for uh, the, the future, we will be broadcasting uh, from the rectory, from my home. home. Uh, as of Easter, we're no longer um, uh, able to, to, to broadcast remotely from the church. So uh, much as we ask you to consider your, uh, your living rooms and, and your houses uh, a place of church uh, and ask you to make it sacred space, um, this is uh, where I'm going to be broadcasting to you from, uh, from my sacred space yeah, here at home. Uh, and it's a fitting Sunday to do that. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the, uh, the sermon. Uh, but a few announcements before we get started. The first uh, is that uh, after uh, Easter, uh, Jesse uh, and Robbie and Aiden made their way safely uh, to their new home in Texas, and we wish them well. As soon as there's any detail on when uh, they'll be able to come back and we can send them off in, um, in fitting fashion, we'll let you know that, uh, that as well. Uh, also, you, I encourage you to read the weekly news because there's a lot in there uh, that, um, that, that talk about how uh, we continue to have uh, so many ways uh, to connect, uh, to, uh, to minister, uh, and to be together. So please, please consider uh, reading that carefully uh, each week. And if you don't get it, uh, let us know as well. Just send an email. Um, and uh, to that end, know that the office uh, is, uh, is closed. Uh, we are uh, coming in for critical functions, uh, but they, there aren't particular office days, and uh, we're encouraged to, uh, to stay out of the church as much as we possibly can, uh, which is why I'm broadcasting from the rectory. Uh, but if you need uh, one of us uh, or you need uh, anything in particular, don't hesitate to reach out, to call or text or email, uh, and we will, um, we'll be able to respond pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we are continuing to work from home and uh, in other places, so, um, so continue to do that. Uh, also wanted to make you all aware, if you uh, haven't read in the weekly, uh, Amber Kifney uh, and her family are making masks and, um, and they are uh, packaging them and they will distribute them uh, or we as the church will distribute them to whoever needs them. I have some over at the church right now. Uh, so uh, if you need masks, which uh, they are recommending uh, that we wear anytime we go into a public place, uh, please let us know and we'll coordinate uh, a way to pick them up or, or deliver them to you. Uh, but it's a wonderful ministry and we're very grateful for the Kiffneys uh, for doing that. Uh, also, in this season, I think it's incredibly important for us to continue to, uh, uh, to reach out, uh, reaching out to one another and reaching out beyond um, uh, to the, the community at large. I think it's good for uh, the heart and soul uh, and, uh, and therapists uh, say it's, it's good for us and our mental health uh, to serve others. So I know it's a little bit more complicated in this day and age to serve, but, uh, but we can be generous as we are able. Um, uh, and there's uh, in the weekly uh, different ways that we can continue to, uh, to serve others, including writing letters to some seniors, um, uh, giving uh, to the food banks, uh, giving to the uh, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation specific fund, uh, for uh, meeting the needs of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, other ways that we can serve are to continue to reach out to one another. I've been uh, really, really moved by the number of folks that have, uh, that have uh, reached out to, uh, to one another and uh, checked in to see if uh, people are okay, especially those that live alone, if there was uh, you know, any groceries that were needed. Uh, continue to do that. And think about maybe one or two more people uh, that you can expand that circle to include uh, each week. Uh, and that, that hopefully will ensure that, um, that folks, uh, not only are their needs met, um, uh, but that they have a listening ear and, um, and, and some sense of connection. Uh, I think that's what we're craving a, a lot right now. Uh, and I, uh, to that end, I think this is an important time for us to be together. Uh, so I hope you continue to, uh, uh, to make this uh, a Sabbath time, a time for us to be together and for us to be together with God. Uh, also, uh, I encourage you to support the local community in, in ways that you are able. Uh, there are still uh, some of our uh, uh, some of our restaurants are able to offer uh, curbside or delivery services. Uh, you can uh, go online to see which ones are still offering that. 
Um, some of our retail stores have moved online. Uh, you can purchase gift cards uh, if you don't have any immediate shopping needs or don't want to go out, but maybe uh, call and see if you can get a, a gift card over, over the phone, just uh, some way to uh, continue to support uh, these uh, the small businesses that make this such a, a wonderful community in which to live uh, and that support us, the church and school in so many different ways uh, and represent us. Uh, so many of them, uh, these small businesses are, uh, are people in our, our church and school community. So reach out in any way that you can. I, I do encourage that. Um, also know uh, that uh, our adult formation team starts their uh, book group uh, today. Uh, we are reading Marcus Borg is meeting Jesus again for the first time. And if you look at the weekly, uh, you can get information about getting the book and, and how to, uh, to join the conversation. Um, to that end, I encourage all of you to consider being part of a, a, a small group of, of some variety. I found on Thursdays, it's been such a meaningful part of our week to, uh, to come together and for the bishop to uh, give us a little re reflection on the gospel and then just to have that time to connect. Uh, and um, whether it's about the Sunday gospel, uh, whether it's about the book, uh, or whether it's just a, a, a group that just wants to get together and, um, and talk, uh, let us know. And uh, Bob Irving's volunteered to, uh, to give a, a phone number or a Google Hangout link uh, so that folks can, uh, can connect. And um, we can either form groups from folks that call in and say they'd like to be part of one, uh, or if you have a group of eight to 10 families or, uh, or individuals that want to be uh, put together into a group, uh, let us know that as well. But I think these connections are, are critically important. So, um, so with that, I invite us to begin our worship. And since it's Easter, um, let us begin the same way we began Easter morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's do it again. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now let's take a moment to pray. Most loving God, be with all of us. Allow us to feel your presence, to know that you are in the midst of all of this, that you are lifting us up, that you're providing encouragement, that you are at the helm. Give us hope. Allow us to see moments of light and goodness. Allow us to feel connected that our lives are indeed knit together and knit together by a love that comes from you. Be with each of us, be with our families, be with our beloved ones who are alone. May we be a solve for their loneliness. May you be ever present and may your presence be felt with them. Be with those who are sick or sad or hurting in any way, be with all whose economic outlook has become cloudy or that that has become a source of anxiety. Those on a fixed income, those whose job may hang by a string, those whose, whose livelihood depend on these small businesses. May we all feel comfort Remove the anxiety from us and deliver us. Provide for us our daily bread. Give us all peace, a deep peace, the assurance that all will be well, that all will be okay. Be with those that risk uh, so much to uh, make people well, to provide uh, the necessities that we depend on, the delivery people, the uh, people who stock the shelves and the cashiers, the, uh, the medical community, uh, 
all of the emergency services, be with all those who uh, continue to have to work each day with varying levels of risk. May they do so safely, and may they know that we are with them. As loving God, we lift up all those on our prayer list. May they feel our prayers. May your healing be with them. Now we pray for anything that sits on our hearts. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the reading for today is from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I've preached countless times on this passage. It comes up every year, the Sunday after Easter, which is often referred to as Low Sunday. So, uh, so all the way through uh, seminary, when I was a seminarian uh, at my field at Parish, I'd be asked to preach on this uh, on this particular text, and um, and so probably more than any text, I have had time to wrestle with it, and I almost always get to the same place a bold defense of Thomas. I talked just a few weeks ago about how much uh, I uh, connect with Thomas, how much um, my uh, desire to, to have assurance of what can't uh, be assured uh, has led me to, uh, to a deeper faith, that, uh, that it has been in my questions uh, and my, my doubts uh, that I, I know that God is pulling me toward, uh, toward God. Um, and and it, it is led uh, not necessarily to, uh, um, uh, to quantifiable evidence as, as much as a, a deeper understanding uh, of the, the God that I, uh, that I give myself over to. And so, um, so I've definitely, uh, definitely spent a good bit of, of the time uh, reflecting on why Thomas shouldn't get the moniker Doubting Thomas uh, and, uh, and relegated to what's called Low Sunday. Um, uh, Judas doesn't get a moniker. Uh, Peter, uh, who even after he's told he's going to do so, uh, denies Jesus three times, uh, becomes uh, 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 Petros, Peter, uh, the rock on whom I'm going to build my church, uh, the, 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 the father of, of, of the church. 
uh, and the other disciples who are uh, not necessarily in, uh, in, in mass quantity at the foot of the cross, uh, very few acts of, of heroism uh, detailed about those, those men. Um, and they're all gathered, locked uh, for, out of fear, uh, but none of them uh, get the moniker. But Thomas, uh, Thomas, who said, uh, Jesus, if you're going to Jerusalem, we're going with you. Uh, uh, Thomas, uh, who wasn't locked uh, in fear, he's the one who went. Uh, and uh, I imagine that Thomas knew uh, if this was true, uh, if Jesus had been raised from the dead, that this would change everything. Uh, this would not just change uh, his life forever. This would change the world forever. And so uh, any truth of that, um, uh, any evidence of that would be critical. I'd uh, like to envision that he uh, was out there pounding the uh, proverbial pavement, uh, looking for signs uh, of Jesus alive, his dear friend alive, uh, that uh, the fear of, uh, of the Jews didn't overcome him or cripple him or lock him um, uh, in the room. Uh, that he he was out uh, searching uh, for uh, for truth uh, for Jesus, um, and I also uh, I've also railed against the sermons that uh, that talk about uh, this is the um, uh, the evidence that uh, that we'll miss something. Uh, as much as I believe in the church and think that uh, there's something amazing about being part of a community that. Uh, that affirms to us week in and week out that indeed uh, Christ is risen, uh, that hope is uh, a, a core aspect of our identity, that, uh, uh, that there is a love and a goodness in the world uh, that, that was there from the very creation, that was the nature of how uh, the world came into being. Uh, I believe deeply in all of that and that the church affirms that uh, and that uh, it is a critical touchstone. Uh, but I don't think the gist of this story is that if Thomas were at church that first Easter Sunday, uh, gathered with the others, uh, that, um, that he wouldn't have had to wait a week to get the truth, the, the evidence that he needed. Um, in fact, I don't think that that gathering started out as church at all. Um, I don't think church is where we gather uh, behind locked door out of fear. I think it's where we, uh, uh, where we lay our fears uh, so that we can go out um, uh, less burdened and more able uh, to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. Uh, yeah, so uh, I spent a good bit, as you can tell, uh, of these Sundays after Easter defending the, uh, uh, the good name of, of Thomas, uh, Thomas the Passionate, uh, much more than Thomas the Doubter. Uh, but, uh, but this year, this passage struck me differently. This year, as I read it, uh, I felt more and more uh, drawn to to the reality that they were gathered, locked behind closed doors. Um, they were uh, in their own quarantine. They were locked in and they were anxious and they were afraid and they had heard that Christ is risen, but that didn't feel like their core identity. It didn't feel like the most palpable uh, feeling in the room. Uh, uh, hope uh, still was uh, overcast by fear and anxiety uh, and not knowing what this meant for them. Uh, and that was the context uh, for which Jesus entered. Um, and I think that that's our context. And uh, as much as I would uh, prefer to be broadcasting uh, where I'm a lot more comfortable up at that, um, uh, the top step of the chancel uh, or up at that pulpit uh, where I know how to, uh, uh, to do what I do, uh, I think this is probably the most appropriate moment uh, for us to be gathering in this way, for me to be broadcasting to you uh, from uh, inside a, a locked house, from inside these uh, these walls um, that, uh, that we quarantine ourselves within uh, because the assurance of this day is that God enters into that place, that Jesus comes through locked doors and, uh, and thick walls uh, to be with us, to assure us uh, that we are still the church. Uh, and I do think that Jesus took that, uh, that uh, gathering of, of the fearful uh, and he turned that into church. Uh, he took that uh, unusual gathering behind locked doors and somehow he entered into that space uh, and somehow he transformed that moment from a moment of fear uh, into a moment of grace uh, and hope 
uh, into a moment uh, that sent those disciples out uh, to tell Thomas uh, and so many others, uh, Christ is risen indeed, hope is in the world. That is uh, the more present force uh, than the fears and the anxieties uh, and the ill will um, uh, that we do to one another, uh, that hope uh, is, is our core identity uh, and that we are indeed uh, children of light and, uh, and proclaimers of resurrection. Uh, and that got me thinking uh, about all of the stories that we told leading up to this day, uh, that they are all stories uh, of what we receive uh, and who we are as the church. Uh, I think of Nicodemus uh, and how uh, God comes to him um, and somehow pulls on his heart uh, and that uh, in his story, um, the way that he meets Jesus uh, has to be on his own terms as he's coming to, to grips with it. And so he comes to Jesus uh, by the dark of night and, um, and Jesus doesn't give him quick answers. He doesn't give him um, anything easy, but he gives him more to chew on. Um, that you can be born from above, uh, that you can have a new life, uh, and not one of condemnation, but one of grace, uh, and that uh, that you can enter into this. And it continues, uh, obviously, to uh, uh, to feed him, uh, and it's what he needed to to, to receive. Uh, it's what the healing he needed internally from Jesus. And after he received it, we see that transformation take place uh, as he's still part of the Sanhedrin, but he's the one who says, uh, you know, the law requires that Jesus have a trial. Uh, and then we see it um, uh, go even further as he's uh, one of the two uh, that help take Jesus from the cross uh, and give him a proper burial. And we see that um, that he became um, an instrument of the church, part of the body, um, uh, through uh, going and meeting Jesus and receiving what he needed to be healed and then being sent out. Um, uh, and that's just the same story uh, we get the next week that we talked about in Lent, uh, that story of the woman at the well uh, who came at the, the height of, uh, of day so that she uh, would be alone uh, because she had been so stained uh, by uh, all of uh, the unfortunate events of her life, by having several husbands before, uh, and that uh, going uh, when everyone else gathered uh, was, was always uh, such a moment of embarrassment or shame that she went at high noon um, and she wanted desperately. The solve that she needed in her life was to know uh, that she was lovable, that she was okay, uh, that, that she, she could be holy, that she could be a holy vessel. Uh, and when Jesus met her uh, and offered her living water, uh, his healing for her came and saying, I know you, I know your whole story, uh, and you are holy and you can be a disciple. And she went out and she told everyone um, about this person, Jesus. Uh, and so that she received what she needed. Uh, and then the next week at the Pool of Siloam, uh, or actually it wasn't even at the Pool of Siloam, where Jesus runs into the, uh, the, the blind man and he, um, and he spits into the dirt and makes mud and he rubs the mud in the blind man's eyes and he makes him a participant in his healing. And he says, go uh, wash in the pools of Siloam, which means sent. Uh, and the healing uh, was the gift of sight and his participation in his own healing, uh, which empowered him uh, to do indeed be sent and to go out uh, and to be a disciple, to be a follower, um, uh, to do the work that, uh, that we are all called to do. Um, and we move from there uh, to the story of Mary and Martha and their distress at the death of uh, their brother Lazarus. And, um, and Jesus comes in um, and he gives them the gift of, uh, of crying with them, of, of his heart uh, breaking uh, for their brother um, and the gift of restoring Lazarus to life. Uh, but as much as, as, as it was the, the gift of restoring Lazarus to new life, even though it meant his own death in Jerusalem not far away, uh, it was also the fact that he shed tears and that his heart broke. Uh, and they knew indeed how much Lazarus and, and, uh, and Mary Martha uh, meant, to, uh, meant to Jesus. Uh, and that was the healing that they needed. Uh, and it was also uh, a moment where, uh, where Mary, uh, Mary wasn't just healed, but she was empowered, uh, where she had an understanding of what this meant for Jesus, that this, uh, that this initiated his 
uh, his road to Jerusalem, his road to death. Uh, and the next uh, engagement with Jesus uh, was when she washed his feet um, uh, with, those, with that precious nard, uh, preparing him for the burial that would await him. Uh, and so that was, um, that was how Jesus met them in their grief, gave them the healing that they needed so that they could be transformed for God's work. Um, and, and obviously, um, we meet on, on Easter Day uh, with the healing of, of, of all the world in Jesus being raised from the dead, but particularly in the story of Mary Magdalene, uh, where she goes to the tomb and all she wants is to be able to, uh, uh, to care for her beloved friend, uh, for the person that, uh, that, that touched something in her, uh, and she just wants to know that his body is okay. Um, and even uh, when he, she sees Jesus and doesn't uh, recognize him in the gardener, uh, it's when that intimate word, Mary, uh, her name is, is spoken uh, by her beloved, um, her beloved friend, uh, her teacher, her rabbi. Um, it, does, she, uh, does she get uh, what she needs, uh, that, uh, that he is indeed alive, um, and that, uh, that in him being raised, uh, she's raised to a new identity, uh, and and she becomes the first disciple, the first evangelist, uh, going and uh, and sharing that that good news with the world. Uh, and then in this story, in the story that we have today, uh, first the disciples uh, they gather and they're gathered, locked in uh, in fear, and Jesus comes in, and the first gift that he gives them, peace be with you, peace be with you. May all your anxieties, your fears, your heartbreak, your confusion, uh, all of this chaos wash away, and may you experience the peace of God. And then he did something that, um, that probably sounds so much different than it would have a couple months ago, just like the, uh, the spittle um, uh, to the blind man. Uh, he breathes on them. He breathes on them the gift of God's Spirit the assurance that God is always with you, that God has equipped you and empowered you and given you the gift uh, to heal, uh, to forgive, uh, and uh, to be my hands and feet in the world. And so they become church. Uh, they go in with all of their burdens. They go in with all of their confusion and not knowing, and they're met with a God who heals them with exactly what they need, um, the encouragement uh, and the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, that God is indeed with them, uh, and then they're sent out. And, uh, and they go and they share the word. Um, uh, and he tells them, you are sent, you are sent uh, to go and, and, and to heal and to forgive and to do uh, the work that you have watched me do, that you know that you are equipped to do. Uh, and he, they go out to Thomas and others. Uh, and then Thomas, on that second Sunday, uh, this Sunday, uh, that second Sunday of Easter, uh, where we hear that story of Jesus uh, you know, going again through those uh, locked doors and through those walls uh, to meet Thomas, to meet Thomas who needs to know, who needs to know that this, this truth that would change his life, that would change the world is in fact true. Um, and he shows him the wounds uh, and at that point, Thomas doesn't even need to touch them. Uh, he knows that this is his Lord, that this is his God, and he knows what he is equipped and ready to do. To do. So he leaves uh, and he goes uh, to begin being church. And he goes as far as any of the disciples went uh, to be church. Um, and beyond that, uh, the truth for us today is that God comes and meets us that through our locked doors, through the walls of our houses, uh, that we don't need to, to be inside of St. James uh, to be the church, uh, to be in communion uh, with God. It's how we have come uh, to be in communion with, with God in, in, in so many meaningful and important ways. Uh, but the truth of it is, uh, is that Christ comes to us that Christ comes through those doors and through those walls uh, into our living rooms, uh, into our broken lives, into our anxieties, into our fears, uh, into our wounds, and resides there and says, peace be with you. Take your anxieties, take your fears, and take them off. I'm with you. I've given you everything you need. 
So what do you need for healing? What gift do you need to receive from the Christ that promises to come into your closed doors, through your walls, to heal you, to empower you, to send you, so that you can go and be the fullest person that you were made to be? These are all stories of people going to church, meeting the God that is all-loving, all-knowing, receiving what they needed for healing, and then being sent out into the world to live incredible, robust, meaningful lives that touch the hearts and lives uh, and, and spirits of others. And so this is indeed, indeed a story about how we are uh, still very, very much the church and how we can live risen lives in Jesus who heals and who sends us. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, remember that life is short. And we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and may the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim that Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And I wish you a wonderful week.